Okay, here is the Sharp RT10 from shopgoodwill.com, and I have yet to test this or plug it in or turn it on, so we're going to do that right now. And we're going to assume that the cassette mechanism does not work, and we're going to assume that the reason it doesn't work is not because of the belts, but because of the tire on the cap stand. The most likely scenario, and the one that I've seen before, is that the capstan tire has failed and it's no longer able to drive the idler wheel or the take-up spindle. So let's try by pressing play here and we can see the take-up spindle is not moving. So the next course of action will be to take off the case and take a look inside of the Sharp RT-10. Okay, here we are inside the RT-10. And first of all, let's check a look, take a look at the motor. And we got a date of 24 January 1980. The inside of this is very close to the inside of the RT-20. The belt that drives the tape counter uh, actually looks to be intact, which is a good sign for the other belts. But again, certainly the tire on the capstan has failed. And so we will take out the cassette mechanism here uh, to confirm that and replace it. We can remove the cassette mechanism by removing these two screws disconnecting the tape counter belt and removing or detaching this spring here. And then this whole unit will come out. I will need to clip the zip ties, which are holding the wires here um, in order to get the freedom to pull the cassette mechanism out. Also, these two screws on the bottom of the cassette deck need to be removed so the cassette mechanism can be freed. Now I need to remove these three screws on the back of the mechanism to remove the motor and plate to have full access to everything that needs repair. Okay, we detached the motor from the mechanism and then we're able to slide it out and kind of turn it around. And uh, we do see that the rubber tire on the cap stand is basically gone um, really it's just kind of melted away and it it goes in there and this idler wheel when you press play moves into position to make contact with what should be the rubber tire here and it makes contact with the take-up spindle and so the motor which drives the cap stand also drives this wheel here and the take-up spindle. But since the rubber has melted away, that is no longer happening. So also you can see around this idler tire that it is um, very sticky and that's the remnants of the tire on the capstan. Here's another look of the capstan in the bearing with the idler wheel and the take-up spindle above. And you can see the rubber residue on everything, especially the capstan tire. And the clip, which we can remove, will enable us to take out the flywheel. Okay, here's the flywheel with capstan and the clip that you saw earlier. Forgive the camera work here, but here's the back of the cassette mechanism and the capstan bearing, which is held in by these two screws, which we will remove and soak everything in alcohol. Okay, back to the front and the capstan bearing has been removed and we'll pan down to the bearing, which doesn't appear dirty, but I guarantee that there is a fair amount of rubber residue inside, deep inside the bearing. So we will soak this in alcohol 
and then use a pipe cleaner and clean it all out. So here is the tubing I'm using as the capstan tire. The inner diameter of the tubing is two millimeters and the outer diameter is five millimeters. And basically we're just going to cut some of this tubing to fit inside this capstan housing slash bearing. And we just kind of uh, eyeball it to make it work. Okay, here's the size I've settled on for the tubing. A little over two centimeters and that will fit entirely inside this housing here. And there we are with the flywheel capstan and you can see the rubber tubing now that's on the capstan and I'm gonna install this back into the cassette mechanism. Of course I have to take it all apart first to get it to fit. Okay we've got everything installed and cleaned up and put back together. I'm gonna hit play and you can see how that idler wheel comes in contact with the capstan tire and also the take-up spindle. And so I'm going to get the motor mounted back. The We will replace the belts and get everything hooked back up. And hopefully we have a functioning Sharp RT10 cassette deck. All right, I've got everything put back together in order to do a sanity check. I did put new belts on, reattach the motor to the cassette mechanism, and I'm going to power this up. And we're going to see if everything seems to be working. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reset the tape counter. I'm going to press play. And yes, the take-up spindle is now working. The tape counter is working. So it's looking pretty good here. So the next thing to do is to play a cassette. Okay, I've got a cassette locked and loaded and we're going to see how it sounds. All right, it's great to hear something come out of this cassette deck. I think I'm good. I'm gonna check the speed. And if I need to adjust the speed, there is a screw on the back of the motor where I can do that. But just to hear something uh, is pretty fantastic. And I need to put it back together completely. And I'm gonna zip tie the wires back to where they were before. Reconnect the spring to the record switch. And I think this is good to go. Here I am testing recording with this deck, kind of adjusting the record level meters left and right. And I've got a blank tape in there paused. And I unpause it and then it does record. And here is playback of what I have just recorded, and it sounds pretty good. So I'm pretty pleased with the results of this repair. Thanks for watching.